Hi, I'm Keith McAvoy, CEO of Success That Works and founder of Supercharge Academy. Have you ever wondered why certain managers seem to progress along their career and then just stop? And they just get stuck there. No one wants to work with them anymore. And they just get miserable and horrible. And ugh. we all know people like this, right? And we all know the phrase that managers get promoted to their level of incompetence. So is it true or not? Well, I, I can tell you from my own personal experience, I so believe it's true, but, but not in a nasty way, in, in, in a way that, that basically companies work and they force managers into this position. I had a friend, he's actually a really good accountant, very skillful, very experienced. And about four years ago, um, he, he was actually moved into a position, a, a, it was a really good promotion for him. He got on really well with his boss and basically, basically his boss pushed him into this managerial position. And it, it was so clear, within about three weeks, you knew this, this is bad. And, and about three months later, he was miserable. Basically what, what happened was he, he wasn't able to manage a team very well. And very quickly, he fell out with his team. No one wanted to work with him. He wasn't able to get stuff done, but yet he was still a manager of that department. He still had all the responsibilities on his shoulders. He just wasn't able to, to go and make it work. He wasn't able to delegate. He wasn't able to create the team environment. He, he was just missing the key skills for that position. So what happened to him? Well, here's the frightening thing. He is still in that position, and this is almost four years later. And you probably know people in this exact situation, but if you think about it from his position, right? He was promoted this, this, this place where actually didn't have the skills to do it. But what's he do now? He can resign, right? And face the humiliation and lose his salary. You know, that's not gonna happen. He can try and work his way and try and make it work. Well, that's what he's been trying to do. Has he been successful? No, he hasn't. He just has one team after another, very stressed. But his third option is, is what? To go and demote himself, to lose his salary, to, you know, that ain't gonna happen either. Or what's he do? Apply for a job outside the company in, in a different role, a different managerial role. You know, he's, he's not gonna get that because they're gonna see straight away, hang on a second, you don't have the skills for this managerial role. So he's gonna to have to apply for a job that's of a, a less salary as well. So he's trapped. And when I was chatting to him there a, a few weeks ago, he basically sees himself as stuck in that position and he's waiting for the next round of redundancies, you know, whenever that is, it's not on the cards even. So there he is just wasting and planning and waiting for something to happen in the future that will take the decision out of his hands. It's, it's a really horrible, situation to be in and it's, a, it's a, a very interesting fact about managers being promoted to the level of incompetence. It was actually a guy called Lawrence Peters back in, oh, it would have been 1969, so a long while ago. And what he, what he said was, and it was very interesting and it's completely true still today, but he basically said that managers start off in life with a certain level of, of skill. So here's your skill and success, yeah? And what happens is, is that, that if they're successful, then their boss recognizes them and says, oh, do you know what? You're good, you're successful. So they promote them, yeah? But based on, you get promoted based on what you did here, okay? And hopefully you're gonna be successful again. Those skills you had there will get you successful again. And guess what happens? Your boss goes, oh, do you know what? You're doing really well, let's promote you again. But based on the skills you had in your old job, eventually you're gonna go up to a point where the skills you had for your own job no longer work for the new job. Exactly like my friend. Exactly like my friend. It's almost inevitable. And 1969, right? Does that sound as if it's still relevant to you now? Oh yeah, it is. And not only that, this is proven by research after research. There was a study even back in 2013 by Harvard Business Review and basically they went through that and they, they said, here's the mad thing, 82%, 82% of managers are promoted like this. 82% and they're missing key skills for the next position. 82%, absolutely mad. Actually, I'll put, I'll put a link to the, the article below this video so that you can go and review it itself. It makes for amazing reading. So how do you make sure that you're not gonna be in this 82%? Right? And how do you make sure that, that you're not gonna be in this humiliating position where you're gonna be stuck, not knowing what to do, having to you know, either downgrade salary. No, it's not pleasant here, we don't want you there. 
So basically what I've got for you is, is three things that you can actually do now. And it'll take, this is, all of this will probably take you about two, no, not even two hours, about an hour to do, but it'll stop you getting into this position, okay? So pay really close attention because I'm gonna give you a task at the end of this. Here are the three things that you need to start focusing on. So the first thing you need to do is go and figure out your next position. So if you're a manager, maybe you're looking for a director of sales role. Well, what I want you to do is to go and, and search for eight to 10 job adverts for a director of sales. If you are like my friend, a financial accountant, and, and he wants to be a manager or he wants to be a, you know, a senior financial accountant, go and seek out eight to 10 job descriptions for that role, okay? If you can't find job descriptions, go onto LinkedIn and go and search for people who are doing the job that, that you would like to do. It's really easy. It'll take you about, you know, between Monster and LinkedIn, it'll take you about, about 20 minutes to find, find those eight to 10. And here's what I want you to do. So get out your, your highlighter pen or get a spreadsheet ready. And what I want you to do is on those eight to 10 jobs, I want you to look at what experiences are they looking for? Okay, so what is it that they've got listed under there? And it's typically, they'll even have a big title saying experience acquired. And it'll be like, you know, manager, team builder, all of these types of things, eight years in a row. And I want you to write them all down for all eight and put them together. And when you've got them together, have a look at it and ask yourself a very honest question. So I am here, this is me here, and I want to get to there, yeah? Okay. How do I get there? And have a look then at the skills or the experiences that if you were in that position, you would need to have. And then here's where you need to be really honest with yourself, is how many of those experiences do I have now that I need for this position? And here is the million dollar insight, okay? How do you then get those experiences now in your current role that will make this future role really easy for you? And it, a lot of them are really simple. If someone says uh, in their experiences, I need two levels of senior management experience in this type of role, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna create that role. You're gonna create opportunities for yourself. You're gonna re rearrange your team. You're gonna talk to your boss. You're gonna do what you need to do to go and create that experience so you get it now for your future role. You get it? It's very straightforward. Second thing, this, this is really important. This is the one that most people overlook. Personal skills, okay? Personal, well, I can actually spell it today as well. Again, laying out those, all those eight to 10 job descriptions. Have a look down now for the personal skills. Again, they typically have a little little section, they make it really easy for you to understand. And it'll be things like you know, time management and team building. In fact, there'll only be four. It always breaks down. In fact, there's only three, really. You, it'll be personal productivity. It'll be influencing skills. And influencing skills, it might be called something like presentation skills or, or sales or negotiation. But such is just the same thing. It's trying to get your opinion across to someone else and in a way that, that they'll respond to it. And the third thing is team skills. So they are the, the three personal skills that I guarantee your future job will be asking for. So go and make sure that you become an absolute master in these. Absolute master. Influencing skills. You, every opportunity you get to stand in front of people or do a presentation, or you need to be thinking, how do I make what I did last time better, even more better? Look for those opportunities now in your current role don't wait until you're, you're up here. And the same with your team management. How do you make your team absolutely sizzle, right? That's your job, to go and figure out that now before you're exposed when you're up here. And the final one is Q, is qualifications. Again, the beauty about job adverts is, that, again, they have a nice, typical, really easy section that says, this is what we want. And there's, there's two important things about qualifications. There are qualifications that are, are like door openers. Basically, if you don't have the, the qualification, you're stuck, you cannot get that job. If you're a brain surgeon and you don't have a medical degree, right, 
you ain't going to become a brain surgeon. Never in a million years. So that is, that's an example of a, of a door that's just shut to you if you don't have that qualification. But most qualifications aren't quite like that. Most qualifications are the door is a, a little bit open and with a bit of you know, maybe an MBA or a skill set and an accounting qualification, essentially what you're doing is you're oiling the hinges of the doors. The door opens to you a little bit more by having that qualification. But again, look at the job descriptions and make a list of what the qualifications are. If they're asking for a qualification that is basically door is stuck and you don't have that, right? Take it off your career path, right? Or if your boss offers you a job that gets you into that position without that qualification, be very worried because you might get into that and then find out actually there was a reason why everyone else asked for that and your boss sort of somehow looked over it. They basically set you up to be stuck in a position. So again, very careful about the qualifications. Make sure that, that you list them out and where you're missing a qualification, right? You now have, you've been forewarned that you need to get this qualification for your next position. So go and figure out how you do it. And, and if, you, you know, if you're not gonna be funded by the company, well, do you want to fund it yourself? Think about it, this is a big step up in salary. You know, if you need to get that qualification, think seriously about going out and getting it, especially if almost all the job adverts are asking for it. Right, so they're, they're the three things. What I want you to do now is go and do this. It, it'll take you, you know, an hour to go and find those eight to 10 job descriptions. Use Monster, LinkedIn, Google, your own internal board. You know, just have a look, find them, print them off and have a look at them. And then just go through and figure out what experiences, personal skills and qualifications you need for that position. And here's the really cool thing for you. Not only will it set you up to be very successful here, you're not gonna fall down on this Peter principle and, and be promoted to your level of incompetence. The exact opposite is gonna to happen to you. Because when you are ready and when you hit the interview for this, guess what? You will be ticking every single box because you have everything you need for that position and you will be in a very strong interviewing position. In fact, you will be sought after by headhunters. It won't be you begging to try and stretch yourself into a role you're not capable of. So go ahead and do that. I will talk to you next time.